Good afternoon, sir. We're glad to have you as a part of our uh, in our video interviews, and we're glad it's a pleasure to have you with us. Um, my first question in developing countries, like in the Middle East, for example, where resources are limited and um, and the cultural backgrounds are limiting some new ideas and some uh, ideas of change in terms of education, uh, where reform exactly lays in the state and the people? Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm Sir Michael Barber. I'm um, Chief Education Advisor at Pearson, and I was on a panel this morning talking about whole system reform, yes. and it's a pleasure to be part of your uh, blog and, uh, and this dialogue with you. Look, there are, there are a couple of things that are important about reform in places like the Middle East. Um, in the end, to get complete transformation of edu education system in a large country, whether it's Pakistan, where I'm working, whether it's England, where I used to work, or whether it's Egypt or uh, Libya or other, other countries in the, the, the Middle East and North Africa, the two things you need, one, you need, in the end, you need some effective government. Uh, ideally a government with a clear strategy that understands that education is part of the solution of the future, um, you, that understands that in the current era, the, the economy the way it is, unless young people grow up with high levels of education, they're not going to be able to get jobs, the economy is not going to be able to grow in the way that you'd like it to. So first of all, you need a government that understands that education is important and has a strategy. And then secondly, you need people in the society who want to play a part in that. You need business leaders who understand that getting cheap, unskilled labour uh, and not doing anything to educate those people is not the future. You need um, not-for-profit organisations that will grow in the new civil societies that are emerging after the Arab Spring and will contribute to creating a climate of expectation of hope, uh, uh, of which education is a key part. Um, and then you need um, people who work in the teaching profession, in the school system, who are willing to recommit to a new future. And as we were debating on the panel this morning, often governments often find it difficult to bring teachers with them because teachers are afraid of change, they protect the status quo. But actually in the Middle East and North Africa, now this is an opportunity to bring change because everybody can see that the world is changing around them. So even the most change-resistant person knows this is a time of change, a time of opportunity. Yes, so there is a topic that is being debatable on um, a theory of injecting new teachers either uh, with, with different uh, visions, with different uh, methods, maybe from different countries, the West for example, into our societies uh, in order to change the education. Uh, would that be enough uh, for societies, that mentalities, uh, or maybe, maybe a religious uh, perspectives, a point of view, limits that? With, with only injecting the community with, with teachers, with the mentality of reform, would be a help? Um, Injecting teachers with the right skills uh, might be a help, but it definitely wouldn't be enough um, uh, because uh, a handful of individual teachers scattered across a system, um, they might benefit the children they interact with, um, but they won't change the system. Uh, so what is needed um, is um, capacity at all levels to change the system. So you do need um, teachers, either new teachers or potentially the existing teachers with new skills. But then you also need administrators at each level of the system who know how to bring about change. Uh, many countries across the Middle East and North Africa have quite, uh, if we're honest with each other, moribund bureaucracies mm -hmm. uh, that aren't used to driving change. They're used to administering the status quo more or less efficiently. But the challenge of change needs new skills among administrators. So if I were deploying talented young people such as you two who are interviewing me, uh, I would be saying, uh, train those people to uh, be leaders in the administration as well as if they want to be to be teachers but I wouldn't rely just on an injection of new teachers. All right that's great thank you. Um, the last question is um, how do we ensure a sustainable reform or, or change in terms of education because um, as you see in, in the Gulf countries for example Qatar is one example or the UAE uh, the new vision of, of a reform in, in uh, education is taking place. So how do we ensure this for the new generations and, and to take more time, not just an instant matter of, of, of uh, political support or, or um, to, to shut up some voices that sometimes they want to, to change the regime or political views? I mean, when you use the word sustainable, the word I use is irreversible. You want to make the education reform irreversible. So you want to change things so that it can never go back to how it was before. Um, and that isn't something you can do in one or two years. Uh, it's something that needs leadership and 
focus and determination over two, three, five, six, ten years. If you look at the stories of Singapore and Korea, they're like 30 or 40 year stories of transformation that have taken systems that were much worse back in, say, 1960 or 1965 than anywhere in the Middle East and North Africa now, but are now much better than even Western developed countries like England. So Singapore and Korea show that with focus and sustained drive for change over time, you can make really irreversible, impressive reforms. So I come back to here. If you want irreversible reforms, you need leadership. You need to generate some results, so early results to show that you're moving in the right direction, to convince people this is the right change to make. You need to work on the culture so that in the heads of the teachers, the minds of the teachers and the head teachers and the, and the parents, they see this as a change they want to continue and they don't want it to go back to how it was before. Um, and then you need to make sure that all the people in the system, administrators, politicians and teachers have the skills to learn in the new context. Um, and finally, you need very good communication with the general public, hearing what they're saying, so you're listening, but also explaining what the new uh, economy of the 21st century, the new society of the 21st century will demand. So a parent doesn't demand for their child what they had when they were a child, because that's a long time ago. Um, and very often, the reformers want something like 20 years in the, fr in, in the future, the teachers are struggling with the present and the parents are thinking, I wish it was like the past, and so you get a big gap of expectations so that, that requires high quality communication. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank and you. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Good luck.